thank you. Good, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I like you. You're very thank nice. You. Thank very you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so please tell me, um, so what happened to you last year in uh, COVID-19? It was a tough time for everybody. Yeah. Last year was still okay. This year is when it has really hit home because yeah. my family, everyone is back home in India. Mm. And every day, like, you know, these days, every day we hear mm. that we have lost someone like really close. Mm. Like this morning, um, we heard that my husband's uncle, like my I'm father-in-law's so first cousin. Yeah. So someone that he grew up with mm. has passed away. He's lost his battle to COVID so last year was still okay people were coping fine but this year it's like you know just there is there there seems to be like you know there is not going to be an end to yeah. all of this it's always something like a flare-up and you yeah. know and we can't travel yeah you know I can't even imagine and this is why all respect to Indian community and whatever you know I'm going through because you know I'm it's I can't even imagine I can't mm. even imagine and yeah so um, how about you how have you coped yeah last year was interesting so i was on maternity leave which probably okay. was a good thing because i was locked up in a baby with a baby anyway, anyway um uh, i'm very lucky in a sense that um i know a lot of uh, hungary hungary i'm from hungary so mm -hmm. hungary was also ravaged um and i know a lot of people who lost a lot of people uh, fingers crossed nothing happened to my family but i do you do live with that fear because you don't know who is next and i think this okay. is the worst bit about this pandemic that yeah. it can hit anybody regardless of how old how young where are they um, what's their background and uh, you know we're very lucky here in perth it's like a a bubble of magic that um, right. we are fine, but we listen, we're looking outside and not able to be there for the loved ones. I think that's for every migrant here, um, it's, it's, it's hard. Yeah. And hard. It yeah. is painful, I believe. Like, although people say that, you know, you live in WA, how do you even know? Like, you know, you probably guys, you guys probably had a lockdown for what, two weeks? Do you know even what we are going through? Yeah. And almost two years now, like the kids uh, have not gone to school. Yeah. And in India, typically the houses are not this big. Yeah. And families are bigger. Yeah. So living in that small box where kids can't go out, they, they can't go to school. Yeah. It's just terrible. Like it's really hard to see them like that. Mm. But there is nothing that we can do. Yeah, what can we do? And I think that's the hopelessness that was very difficult. Mm. Um, but at the same time last year, um, so I came back from maternity leave. And uh, my I work for an organization that is um, very diverse. We're working with seniors. Uh, okay. We have over 57 different languages. And wow. people are from 67 different countries. Oh very my God. diverse. And we're celebrating Chinese New Year and then Diwali and Christmas and everything in between. Yeah. Um, and so it's very diverse. And so, you know, um, ethnic community especially were at risk because we socialize a bit differently. It's a bit more hugging and kissing going on. So we are seniors were especially at risk. So everything had to be shut down. And oh. our organization is usually loud. Um, there's food going around from all around the world. And all of a sudden, our center become quiet on the year when we're supposed to celebrate our 20th anniversary. Oh. So that was very heartbreaking for the staff, for the clients, for everybody involved. And um, we um, when I came back, I had to do the annual report. So I had very lucky, uh, very luckily, I was able to go back and actually see what happened through the eyes of my of my uh, staff, of the uh, clients, and there was huge resilience. Mm. And this is why I'm very proud to work there and were able to listen to those stories because I think as much as we are vulnerable because of you know a lot of hugging and kissing, and it's really hard to get say to the clients, no, no sorry, no. you Even can't because he has airborne. It was very difficult, but at the same time, the resilience that I've seen within the ethnic group was incredible as well. So, yeah, yeah. that's amazing to know. Like for me, work wise, it hasn't really affected me much because mm. I run my own business, um, helping non native English speakers becoming, becoming their voice, giving yes. them confidence, that. giving them that self belief. So, I work from home, and my husband is an essential worker. So, we actually never had that situation like you know for for a short time we did have it at home mm -hmm. where kids were home and he was at home and I was at home and juggling between like 
who is going to take care of the kids who is going to be there at zoom calls like you know yeah. there was a time where i remember my husband was taking calls from the balcony yeah. like you know from the outside yeah. area yeah. and uh, muskan my younger daughter did not know that you know he's on a call and yeah. he jumped <laughs> and suddenly just sprang on his shoulders and my my husband like you know couldn't say anything he yeah. was like okay we have another participant <laughs> in the meeting Oops. <laughs> yeah <laughs> meet the young Aww. the young one here so yeah you know we were laughing on that dad and i should remember bbc had it yeah, and he was yeah. like that you know seriously and this little girl <laughs> goes in <laughs> you know and it's just every day yeah, it's happened that probably yeah yeah it's funny oh, and how old is Uh, mine is one and a half and so yeah yeah so still yeah. not still yet. a little one yeah. still a little one yeah so starting to crawl walk walk he's oh. walking oh, uh he doesn't good. talk but we speak three languages so okay hopefully hopefully will yeah. yeah but yeah it did have an impact and um it was a very interesting year mm. and yes um i was talking to elmi before uh, he said that it, our life changed yes. you know it's it's going to be one of those things that you're going to talk about with your children when they're bigger and understanding how the world yes. you know is happening so yeah, yeah. i really feel for the travel industry the hospitality like like there is there doesn't seem to be that light at the end of yeah. the tunnel that okay you know this is going to be mm. this is the last year yeah. when you're going through like i can't even think that there go, there is going to be a new normal yeah. whereas for the speaking industry of course things have changed as well but but the good part in this whole scheme of things is that the the lines have blurred a lot more like you know you could be physically somewhere else talking to an audience yep on totally the other side of the world and it is acceptable completely fine yeah yeah and i i like that one aspect and yes. um as actually the impact of not letting in migrants at the moment actually mm. um impacting i was thinking also you're talking about my industry yeah. um so we are particularly heavy on migrant workers because we using their mm. skill set their language skill set to help the seniors who don't speak a language oh, but yes. now we don't have anyone coming in so how am i going to meet with someone you can't expect the whole indian community to go and become a support worker you can expect the polish community to become Thomas. the whole support worker so we are actually slowly running out i know everyone's talking about the farmers but when i've seen advertisement for support workers that is literally higher in our relate than mine um mm-hmm. it's incredible because that's how much it needed and the servicing industry is running out it doesn't matter if it's hospitality if it's um you know frontline of uh, any age care service or disability service we are running out of people because migrants mm. those industries built on the back of the new migrants that came here and done the hard work and now we're not letting them in because of this pandemic and it's going to have big impact on everybody yeah. really and that's that's one of those it's, it's interesting to hear that side of the story because i never actually thought of it uh, Yeah. because probably we haven't come to that stage as yet whereas we're in you know our parents probably need support yeah so oh. yeah so they, these are the but you know there was a lot of good story as well as umbrella so um i know that when they said okay shut down they all shut down and um they all went into we call them welfare course mm-hmm. so all the staff who speaking a language it was like you know 50 of them every single line on different languages calling clients making oh, sure that wow. they're okay and then all of a sudden they started receiving phone calls from the clients saying but are you okay was like no no what do you want mrs as well how can i help you i'm like i just want to know if you are okay Aww. yes we are okay do you need any money i'm like no no no, no thank you so special. They, they were so special yes because we built that connection and that trust with our communities and that was such a you know goosebump moment that the clients yeah. calling our staff making sure that they okay too yeah. and then we let our staff to be very creative um mm-hmm. the government give a lot of leeway how we use the funding so that was sure. really good um so some of the stuff instead of group uh, um group activities it become individual mm-hmm. and some of our staff we told them look You, you let us know what you want so one of them decided to do exercise in the garden so he grabbed two of our chairs took it to the lady and started exercising um couple of they were they were so creative it was so amazing to listen how my my colleagues um you know um got over this big hurdle of not be able to touch or talk yeah. um and and doing the best as they can in a very 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 difficult situation so yeah. i think those are the lights of moment we need to celebrate
and remember that when it's the hardest bit that we're still together and we can count on each other. Yeah. 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 And another thing that I have heard my friends especially back home in India or in other parts of the world yeah. where you know covid really really hit hard is the fact that suddenly since everything stopped like you know, their work their other mm. commitments it actually gave them time to reflect like yeah. they probably would have never identified some of the people have come back to their hobbies and they've realized that okay you know that's that's not the work i would like to continue doing wow so it has been like you know there has been a good side of the yeah. coin as well like just like every cloud has a silver lining so one of my friends loved to paint but never like you know could paint yeah, yeah, because yeah. of work yeah, and yeah, yeah. high and fly <laughs> like yeah, yeah, fly yeah. and fly out kind of role but she has come back to painting and she has uh, started her part time business where she is teaching others that too online wow who would have thought <laughs> no no not in a, yeah wow. that you can learn to paint yes. online online yeah everything had to go online so it, yeah. it was but I, yeah i like that angle